everybody and welcome to another edition of Wolfie's Wheels. Uh, in this edition we take a look around the 2021 Tesla Model 3 Long Range which we're currently running. We've had for uh, just over three months and done just over 3,000 miles in it. Um, there are hundreds if not thousands of Tesla review videos on the internet uh, so I'm going to try and make this one a little bit different. It's the a perspective from an owner um, and I'm going to sort of bust a few myths that that sit around Teslas and um, electric cars in general although having said that uh, I'm not going to start talking about whether they are good or bad for the environment whether they are or aren't affordable or anything like that um, but it's just some interesting facts just to try and make the video a little bit different to the normal run of the fair stuff that you, you see on the internet. Tesla Model 3 uh, was first mooted to the public back in 2013 uh, when it was known as Project Blue Star um, and at the time of course it wasn't known whether or not it would be a success uh, and they said at the time that they'd hoped to build 400,000 units a year um, which is quite ambitious for a start-up company uh, and a start-up car. The cars themselves started to be delivered in the middle of 2017 with the order books being opened in uh, 2016. Now an interesting fact really about the order books being opened is when the order books were opened Tesla took 325,000 deposits uh, on the car um, and that actually would equate to some 14 billion dollars of sales and that's a car that's never actually been seen in public it's it's sort of a um, a bit of an unknown um, and that really busts myth number one that nobody wants electric cars well hang on a minute uh, that's 325,000 people who are willing to put money down uh, on a car that they don't actually know anything about uh, just on a, a piece of paper and to put that into perspective the previous record for that sort of thing was held by the Citroen DS when it was announced at the 1955 Paris Salon and in the first 10 days when they opened the order books they took 80,000 deposits. Now, Tesla took 232,000 deposits in the first 48 hours of the order book being opened. So the fact that um, a lot of people say, well, nobody wants an electric car, that kind of disproves that, I think. The car itself was designed in-house by a team led by Franz von, um, I just looked this up, Holzhausen, Franz, Franz von Holzhausen, um, and he, had a, a pedigree that he used to work for Volkswagen and was involved in the team um, that launched the new Beetle. He then went on to General Motors uh, before ending up as a uh, the senior position in the design team at Mazda. Um, and then he went on to, to Tesla. And when they designed the car, they actually wanted it to be a competitor to the uh, BMW 3 Series, the C-Class Mercedes, the Audi A4 not as an electric car, but just as a car. The fact it was electric was kind of secondary in some ways. They wanted a car that would compete head on, go toe to toe with those established uh, cars in their sectors. So a quick look around the outside of the car. Um, this one's finished in the standard pearlescent white color. It has the optional 19 inch wheels, which I think look a lot better than the standard aeros. Uh, and is the 2021 facelift model, which um, spotters couldn't always see because they dechromed it in, in places like here uh, and around the window surrounds uh, and the door handles uh, but they then did some important updates such as uh, putting a heat pump on the battery which gives it a better range makes it more more efficient um, a heated steering wheel a number of cosmetic changes inside uh, and overall, it was just a, a bit of a refresh, really. Um, you're probably very familiar with the, the fact it's not a hatchback and it's a um, saloon car. And I'm not going to go into all of that. There are plenty of other people on it, um, on the internet, who do these sort of things a lot better than I do. But this is, as I say, just a, a quick look around the outside of it. And I think it's quite a good looking car, really. It, I didn't like it when I first saw it, but it kind of grows on you. I think, you know, this nice glass roof and this has got the optional guano covering all over it we're 
currently staying by the seaside. There's quite a lot of seagulls. Um, they all come with this non-opening big glass roof. I think it's a nice design feature. Uh, but overall, I think it's quite a handsome car. I mean, talking of the heat pump and the battery, um, it's time to talk about maybe myth number two, and that's the range of electric cars. Not as in what you can choose to buy, but how far they'll go on the charge. This particular Tesla is a long range Model 3 and has an 82 kilowatt battery. And they say, they say it will do 353 miles on a charge. Um, and a lot of people are going, well, of course it won't. It will never get that. You never get 60 to the gallon or whatever it is that's advertised by the public, uh, by the manufacturers. Um, it's just a fictitious number. However, actually, this one in my experience is, is not too far out. Um, as you can see from the things I'm just putting on the overlay now, uh, the battery was at 50% and the um, charge, the, sorry, the range shown that was left at 50% based on the last 30 miles would give it a range of two times 173, which is 346. But if you look at it on the next slide here, um, where you can see the, based on the last 15 miles, um, it would have a range of 400 miles and on the last five miles, uh, even higher than that. Um, but, you know, and I didn't drive it, that was just normal driving. I just happened to notice it was at 50% and, and would perhaps be a good time to do some easy extrapolations. Um, now, the thing is with the range on electric car, of course, you never take it right down to zero anyway. Uh, you would probably want to be looking to charge up when you had about 20% worth of, ch of, of charge left. Uh, and that would give on this car a range of roughly 276 miles. And of course, people might scoff at that, but let's look at this in some reality. Um, 276 miles, if you're averaging 50 miles an hour, that's five hours of driving. You're telling me your bladder can't, well, isn't going to demand a stop uh, within that time. Um, well, great, good for you. You must have a cast iron bladder or be a salesman. Uh, but for most human beings like me, Mr. Average, you're going to be wanting to stop every couple of hours anyway. So it, it kind of has plenty of range um, to, to get you realistically where you want to go. And you might say, well, I don't drive at 50, I drive at 70. Fine, well, at 70, that's still four hours um, before you start looking. And that's with 20% range left. So uh, as I say, you know, myth bust really that they've got electric cars don't have a good enough range to be used. Um, I don't agree with that. It does, of course, depend on whether you do have home charging facilities and, and things like that, and I accept that. But to sort of out and out say, well, electric cars are, are, are not good enough yet because I, I need a 600 mile range before it yeah, has any credibility. I don't buy that. I think that's myth buster number two. Before we go off the subject of range, um, the car itself, just to again put it, things into a bit more of, of a perspective, um, Tesla being sometimes willfully different, again, kind of reminded me a bit of Citroen and the DS, um, describe their uh, efficiency in uh, watt hours per mile. And this car has been t doing 236 watt hours per mile over the entire period we've owned the car. And to see how many miles that would do um, how that relates to uh, miles per kilowatt of the battery, you simply divide whatever the number is by a thousand. So in this case, 236, that gives you 4.27. So with an 82 kilowatt battery, um, over the past 3000 miles, this car's got a theoretical average uh, range of 346 miles, uh, which is not too far away from their stated uh, 350, 360. And to be fair, uh, it does very much depends on the sort of driving you're doing. Uh, that 236, that includes hooning around, it includes motorways, it includes driving around towns and driving like Mr. Like Mr. Easy's chauffeur. Um, but overall, that's where we're at. Another question people often ask me is, uh, well, how long does it actually take to charge up? And there's a, a huge variety of uh, different answers to that question. Um, I think the answer is probably not as long as you might think would be the uh, the, the simple answer. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go into a whole load of detail. There's actually a channel 
called uh, Tesla Bjorn, uh, a guy called Bjorn Nyland. He does an awful lot of scientific and decent uh, high level sort of research into battery efficiencies, charging times, etc., etc. But in our experience, this is where, where it's at. Um, I'm just going to put a quick uh, overlay on here that you can now see. Um, we stopped at the Gretna Green supercharger um, on the way up, and you could see on there that we actually were uh, hitting 400 and something uh, miles of range added in an hour. Um, what that actually meant was that we wanted to go and charge the car up to 80% because that would be more than enough for our needs. Uh, and it initially said it was going to take you about 25 minutes. Now, the truth is, I actually had to leave the picnic area halfway through eating my sandwiches so that I could go and move the car away from the charger because it was already full uh, up to the 80% that we wanted it to be. So, you know, it, 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 you combine a stop with a refreshment and a wee, etc., etc., and the time it takes is, is, is pretty similar, really. Um, probably a bit quicker than you expect. If you plug it in at home on a, a seven kilowatt charger, um, it will take it up to 80% from 20 in about six and a half hours, which is great because you just put it on overnight and you don't even think about it. Um, and we've actually got a, a cheap overnight tariff where we only pay 5p a kilowatt hour, a kilowatt, sorry, for the electric. So it costs next to nothing to top it up. Um, and we don't really top it up unless it's got less than 30% uh, range, or we know the next day we're gonna go on a long journey. So that kind of, I think, sort of busts a bit of a myth that you're always sat around for hours and hours and hours trying to charge your car. You're not. Okay, this is a bit better than average because it is a Tesla and it has its own supercharger network, which is fantastic. This particular car will charge, uh, if you've got the right charge, at 250 kilowatts an hour. Um, so yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, something I will, however, add about charge times is, of course, it's not linear. You don't put it in and it, and it charges the battery at the same rate all the way through. If you've got a very low battery, it will charge it quite slowly and ramp up quite quickly in the charge rate and then go along at the top of a curve and then, and then start to come down. So you will find the reason why a lot of people charge to 80% when they're on a journey is because filling the last 20% of the battery can take as much time as um, filling say 20 to, to 60 or 20 to 70 percent so it, it that does give you a bit of an issue that if you really want to top up to 100 uh, percent it can take a long time uh, and you're very often or is in fact proven many many times to be more efficient to charge to 80 percent and stop twice as opposed to um, charging to 100 and don't forget that 80 percent will give you a couple of hundred miles range or two or three hours of driving which is fine Right, so let's just go for a drive. Put the seatbelt on. Um, you can see it's all ready to go. Mm -hmm. Just drive off. In complete silence, just about. A lot of road noise. So overall, um, as a car, uh, I really like it, I really rate it. It's a very smooth, easy car to drive. Uh, it's not without faults, it's not without its flaws, of course it isn't. Um, if you show me a car that, at any price point, that, that is perfect, it doesn't exist. Uh, but I can say that if you're driving this car sensibly, in accordance with what you might consider normal driving practices, normal driving standards, you shouldn't find any issues with this at all in the UK. Um, there are, uh, you know, top gear type presenters who say, oh, well, when you're really pushing on, it hits into understeer and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, fine, it probably does. But quite honestly, you shouldn't be driving that back on the road anyway. Um, and, and those guys are professional drivers. I mean, me, I'm Mr. Average, I'm an average driver average driving needs this car handles absolutely fine it's a smooth enough ride 
It's not as smooth, to be honest, even as the, um, the Skoda Superb we had beforehand. But on Britain's pothole roads, uh, it, it is absolutely fine. Uh, it handles well enough, as I said. Um, what's not to like? I suppose the fact we've done 3,000 miles in it in three months is almost a testament to how much we enjoy driving behind this uh, camper van. Um, take the opportunity to talk a bit about uh, the controls on, on the car and a lot of people um, are not keen on having everything controlled through this, this one screen in the middle. Uh, it's distracting, it's this, it's that, it's the other. Uh, <clears throat> and I'll be honest with you, that was a big reservation I had before I bought the car. Uh, but you get used to it really, really quickly. Uh, and you wonder why they hadn't bothered having anything else before. Uh, I mean, the speedo is there. It's very clear, it's always in your peripheral vision. It's no more distracting to look there than it is to look there. Uh, and of course, we've been brought up on cars of a certain vintage, uh, minis, Morris Miners and even the Morgan, a lot of cars, they used to have a central speedo anyway, uh, and nobody ever complained. Um, I mean, you look at the ergonomics of a 911, not exactly uh, brilliant, but nobody, nobody criticises that. I think it's just because it's different, but you know, you've got your speed, this is the speed limit on the road, that's your current speed, and if I put the cruise on, that's what it will set it at. Um, if you look down here, you can see this thing telling me I'm a bit close to the edge. Uh, it is something we're not really keen on on the car as it does get a bit shouty at you for no good reason. Uh, we're perfectly positioned on this carriageway but yet it seems to think I should be moving over a bit more towards the centre of the road which I'm not going to do. Uh, it's a standard sort of UK highway kind of thing. A lot of people sort of criticise the uh, headlights being automatic headlights and not really working like they want them to and the wipers being automatic wipers are not working like they want them to but I've had no problem with them um, the wipers are um, don't always come on when you want them to but it's been the same on any other automatic wiper car I've owned and that's Range Rovers, Range Rover Millar, Range Rover Full Fat Autobiography uh, Mercedes S-Class, Mercedes C-Class, uh, sorry, E-Class, uh, Skoda, they're, they're all pretty crap, but you've just got to give it a squirt at the end of the stalk and they come on. So the fact they're not automatic and you might want a wipe and it hasn't wiped doesn't really matter. Um, but coming back onto this big central screen and, and is it distracting and, and not great? Well, as I said, I, I thought it would be at first. Uh, but it isn't. Um, you've got superb voice command controls. Uh, they work very, very well on this car, best I've ever known uh, voice controls to work. So if you want to do anything like adjust the heating, you simply push the button and say set heating to 22 and a half degrees or I'm cold and it will turn it up. You put the heated steering wheel on that way, you put the heated seats on and off that way. Um, so kind of in terms of, of myth busting uh, and the screen being horrible and distracting and not nice to use and there you go um, then uh, I, I, it's not in my experience but I do completely understand where uh, people would come from um, maybe it isn't for everybody but uh, I don't find it a problem at all so with the tech on the car, um, not only has it got the usual things, sort of skid control, anti-lock brakes and things like that, but it's also got a lot of uh, inbuilt safety features uh, around cameras and things like that. So it's got a radar, it's got eight cameras, it's got 12 sonar devices, and these sort of help the car understand where it is at any given time. And it's all processed by this massive AI computer, uh, which helps the car as I say, I understand where it is on the road and helps avoid accidents and things like that. Uh, and it, it's sufficiently impressive that it car actually carries a five-star NCAP rating. Um, personally, I don't think it always gets it right. Um, 
we saw earlier when we were driving that it seemed to think I was a bit close to the wall. I wasn't. Um, and, it, and it can get a little bit shouty at you. But overall, it, it's fine. Um, not a problem. Um, this car comes with autopilot, the standard. Um, and that basically is a sort of an enhanced cruise control and lane keep assist. So on a road, you, you, it's got the adaptive cruise control, so you'll always stay the right distance behind the car in front, speed up, slow down, etc. And um, it will keep itself in lane, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, but overall, probably not not a reason I'd buy the car. You can then pay a bit extra and have what they call the enhanced autopilot, which has uh, lane change assist on it as well so you can indicate in the car if you're coming up behind a slower car for example you can indicate to the right and it'll pull out around the car and come back in or what they call full self-driving which isn't full self-driving at all um, it's not like you can just put full self-driving in and go and sit in the back uh, it's an extra enhanced assistance system uh, personally i don't think it's worth the seven odd thousand pounds extra you can probably just see on the screen here there's a um, black line the further you put your foot down the bigger the black line you take your foot off and it goes to green now that is uh, basically whether you are putting energy into the battery or taking energy out of the battery and the longer the line in either direction uh, the long black line means you're taking the power out of it and the green means you're putting power actually back into the battery um, through the regenerative braking system on the car uh, and they will help the efficiency uh, and help it get to what it does at, to the gallon uh, to the gallon to the you know what I mean range and stuff like that um, but it very rarely does it, you know I mean it's, it sort of goes black and white and black and white, uh, black and green and black and green all the time really I mean it's green now as I'm just easing off the gas, that's green, 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 green. So we're going to turn left here, turn my foot right off. Uh, lots more green. Oh, not going down there. We're going to go down the next left. Down here. Because one of the things people have always, I expect you're sat there saying, well, hang on a minute, what about this great 0 to 60? Well, let's just go for that. So we've stopped and Go. Look at the speed of that there. It's just phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, are you going to get bored with that? Probably not. But, I mean, it's not just, I mean, that was the standard start, 0 to 60, and I've put up the, the time that it took. Um, but when uh, do the film editing together. But let's just go down this road here um, because it's a good demonstration really of, of, of something else to uh, to watch for. Not watch for but that it's just great about this car and it's all part of its performance. So we're doing 30, we're in a 30 limit, we're in a 30 limit, we're in a 30 limit, come out of it, bang! And the speed that that thing goes up is just phenomenal. Um, it's like you've got a very powerful car that's always spotting the sweet part of its torque curve and in the right gear at all times. So 50, we do 50, 50, 60. You know, it's just amazing, amazing car for that. Um, let's avoid the squirrel. So. One of the other things that people talk about on this car is that it's a noisy car. Uh, I don't think it is. I mean, it is susceptible to road noise. I've got a, a small decibelometer down here and on this particular surface we're doing 50. And if I shut up, you'll see what it's recording. like it's about 88, 89 decibels. It's probably not in the quietest position in the car because it's just resting down there. It may be getting some drumming from the bodywork or whatever. It, but it, if it, we'll go up here and you'll, you'll find a change of surface um, 
at the same speed. Here we are on a different road surface. You can hear the difference, but strangely it's not reflected in the decibelometer. It's not a noisy car. Um, I mean, Top Gear criticised it for being a noisy car when you're pressing on again, when you're pressing on. The guy's doing 115 miles an hour around Millbrook, which is not renowned really for having the smoothest surface. It's quite a grippy surface. Uh, and you know, at, at sort of legitimate speeds, you're not going to tell me this is a noisy car because uh, it isn't. End of. So, you know, a little bit of a drive around in the car, uh, a little bit of history, a few myths busted. Uh, is it a perfect car? Well, of course it isn't, uh, and no car is. Uh, and in particular, what don't we like about it? Well, there's a few things. Um, we don't like the fact that the uh, distance control things while you're driving along seem to be somewhat oversensitive. Um, it's got a very poor steering lock uh, on the, the sat nav. Uh, you can't, oh, it doesn't show non-Tesla or non-rapid chargers, so you, if you're going somewhere and you think there might only be a 7 kilowatt charger, you, you can't tell from the sat-nav whether there's anything there or not, it only shows you the, the high-powered chargers, uh, which isn't great, uh, and there's no Apple integration, so you can't actually use anything other than the, the map set uh, that, that they give you. But on a, on a practical level, probably the biggest thing that is slightly annoying to me is you can schedule your charge time to start but you can't schedule it to end you sort of have to guess roughly how much uh, how full the battery is going to be uh, if you want it to switch off at a certain time so you can say well I want you to start at half past 12 at night which is the start of my cheap rate and only charge for four hours well you can't say four hours you have to think well four hours at seven kilowatts an hour that's 28 kilowatts 28 kilowatts out of a 82 kilowatt battery is how many percent and add that to the percentage that the battery is already at and then you sort of just adjust the slider inside uh, which are probably you can see on the overlay uh, as, I'm, as I'm talking um, and it'd be much better if you could say start charging at half past 12 and stop charging at, at, at uh, four o'clock. Um, you can also set the charge of course to ensure the car is ready for a certain time. I mean, one of the great things on this car uh, is it does over the air software updates. So uh, every time they make an improvement to the car, uh, it, it comes through sort of over, overnight into the car and you just have to load it up. Think of it as an iPhone really, it's a big iPhone. So they do a software bug, debugging or update to make things better uh, and you update it exactly the same way as you do your phone. And I, and I think that's great. Um, and the other, brilliant thing on a similar vein to that is the car uh, I can actually change and reconfigure the car if I spend some money on it uh, to have additional features so for example I the 0 to 60 on this is 4.2 seconds um, if I really want it to go to 3 point something 3.6 I think it is I can actually pay an additional 1500 pounds through my app and it'll unlock a part of the car which will give me more performance uh, I didn't buy the enhanced, enhanced autopilot with the car, but if I want it, <clears throat> all I've got to do is go on the app, pay the money, and I've got enhanced autopilot. All the hardware is already in the car. Uh, and if I want the, the full self-driving, the same. To pay a bit more money, push the button, download it, and Bob's your uncle. And I think that's great because uh, <clears throat> too many times you sort of have a car and you think, well, I wish I'd got this part, I wish I'd got the performance model or whatever, whatever, and you lose a load of money part exchange in the car for, for the next one up but with this car you don't have to um, it it just keeps developing as time goes by and just gets better and better and and I think that's just a phenomenal feature um, I love the supercharger network I mean it's so good you just pull up to the to the pump you plug it in and it starts charging the car um, the, the there's a lot about superchargers on the internet so I'm not going to talk about how they work but they just work 
Uh, no messing about with RFID cards or apps or anything like that. You plug the car in, Bob's your uncle, uh, gets debited to your credit card end of the month, and uh, that's great. Well, for some reason, the camera stopped recording at that point, so I'm doing the wrap-up the following day as part of the editing. Uh, you will notice that I didn't address one of the myths around Teslas, and that's the legendary build quality or lack thereof. Uh, I want to address that in a separate film when the car's clean so we can have a good look around it. So that will sort of follow at some point. Um, in the meantime, if you are thinking of an electric car, then uh, take a Tesla for a test drive. I think you'll enjoy it. If you end up ordering one, um, don't forget to use somebody's referral code. Uh, when I ordered our one, we got a thousand miles of free supercharging, as did the guy whose code we used. Offers change from time to time, but it's worth bearing that in mind. Um, and in the meantime, thanks very much for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, tell your mates and blah, blah, blah. Um, and we'll see you in a future episode of Wolfie's Wheels. Bye. -bye.